Hi everyone, it's Out of Darts. Uh, I know this is not the video that people keep asking for. I will do the Nemesis video. I've got a few things I have to figure out, which is both this surface keeps rocking, it's actually not the camera moving, as people keep mentioning, and I have to build something better. The second being that I'm a little sick of listening to my 3D printers, which you can probably hear in the background, so I'm gonna be working on that. So today, I was just gonna do a quick mod guide on this new Adventure Force Accelerator. Now, I know Buff Daddy already did a mod, and I've done a couple videos, but he basically has already said that this will burn out on 3S. I am, of course, going to test that for you guys and ruin it. And then I will put other motors in there if I need to. Probably not in this video. So my re recommendation from the start is just go with the 2S motor. You're going to get better performance than stock, I expect. Even though it's 7.4 volts, you're going to get a lot more current out of these and out of your new wiring. Do not put a 3S LiPo in here. As always, mod at your own risk. I'm not responsible for anything you do or break, so please keep that in mind. Also, I think 3S is a general bad idea for this blaster because of how easily these flywheels come off. But anyway, let's dive right into it. We're gonna get rid of these batteries, of course, because we're going to go to a LiPo. I'm just gonna clean up my station here. What you're gonna need is heat shrink of a couple different sizes. You're gonna need a switch. I'm not sure which one of these I'm gonna use yet. You're going to need um, wire strippers of some sort. You're going to need wire, snips, uh, and probably a few other little things here and there. Of course, soldering iron and whatnot else. I'm just going to toss balls everywhere here. You are also going to need epoxy putty, snips, uh, potentially some other cutting tools, and gloves to handle the epoxy putty. Uh, I may end up dremeling this, but we'll see how it actually goes to get that switch in. But I'm gonna dive in. This is not going to be a well thought out tutorial like I planned for the Nemesis and for other things, but I will try to talk you through everything I'm going to do. And right off the bat, I'm missing a screwdriver. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and opened up the blaster. I took off the flywheels. You do not actually need to do that, but we're going to go ahead and just start demolition, which is essentially rip everything out that we don't need. So I'm going to remove this uh, stock switch here. These do not seem to be a number one screw. And you know what it is? I'm seeing, I think they've been stripped. I have not touched these and these are stripped out of the box. That's just lovely. I'm definitely noticing some quality control stuff on this blaster where it is clearly not as well built, built as a lot of the Hasbro products are. Um, let's see, I'm gonna actually, I don't know if there's any, I wanna leave this springiness here. So rather than actually pull that, that switch out, I'm just gonna cut these. So we're just gonna go snip, snip. Even though this wiring is 20 gauge, which is pretty decent, I am not going to keep any of it. There we go. It's actually a pretty good little wire path there, which is pretty sweet. I'm going to assume that taking these four screws will get me at my flywheel cage. You know, almost every one of these screws is a little stripped. It's like, that is very strange. <laughs> I don't know how in a commercial production, these aren't so bad. Um, I may be actually using, more than likely I'm using the wrong, wrong uh, size screw. There aren't that many screws on this, so I did not grab my electric one. I do actually prefer that generally. Okay, that's clearly not done it yet. So I've got one more here. Now, one of the things I'm gonna try pretty early on is just to put a, a Strife auto pusher back here because there's actually tons of room and you could cut into the battery compartment. So it'd be really, really easy. Um, looks like I've got to take all these screws out, but uh, so far they are all looking to be the same size, which is nice. I really hate when, when parts are different sizes for no reason. Let's see, could this be a, a no, okay. Looks like I've got to take this one out too. You're modding along with me here, or rather you're watching me mod, but uh, I don't know how this goes together. And that explains why I can't get the cage off. So I can confirm this is, I'm using a Phillips number one, and I do not think this is the right tip. Um, I don't think it's a zero, so I don't know what it is to be honest. Um, so I've got this little slide guy. I'm gonna see, I'm trying to figure out how to do this with the least amount of work, but still be able to show you guys. So I'm thinking, wow, this is interesting. So they, little observation here is that there are some posts over here I noticed that were actually melted. 
And you know what? I am going to punch the camera in for the rest of the video. I think that'll be more beneficial for you guys, and I will try really hard to stay in the frame here. But there are a little spot here that where they hold the wire in, and they actually must have taken some sort of, you know, like a soldering iron or something to melt the piece to hold that in place, and they've actually done it again here with a spring. So they've sealed the spring in here using that, uh, melting that plastic, which that's something I've not seen on Hasbro, so that's kind of a different way of manufacturing, which is kind of interesting to see. All right, stuff's just dropping out. That looks like that went there. The worst part about uh, modding for the first time is remembering where those bits go. So as usual, we are going to just snip everything off of here. These capacitors could stay. Again, I can see they've done the same, um, same technique of uh, melting some plastic together to get at it. So, but the, um, these capacitors actually could stay if you wanted to keep them there. They are there to keep down RF or radio frequency noise uh, interference from other devices. And that's a compliance thing in most countries. Uh, the FCC, I believe, is who controls it here. You may hear some beeping. Those are some 3D printers, or actually, potentially, that's a battery charging finishing up. I wasn't able to stop all of these. So all of this is, of course, garbage, as it is almost always on these kinds of mods. Boy, did they put a lot of gunk on here. It's going to make a nice mess of my soldering iron. So... I had to pause there and come back to grab safety glasses. Always wear safety glasses when you're cutting or soldering. I also wanted to grab this little solder pump because there is a whole mess of gunk on here and I don't can't really clip it off like I might normally. So I'm going to try, oh, that's not working so well. So I'm gonna try one tip with terminals and you gotta be careful that you don't ruin it, but you can snip off all of that gunk instead of trying to melt it off because it's coated in plastic to help it stay in place and I assume to actually help with uh, somewhat waterproofing it. Boy, there's some sloppy soldering on this blaster. I can see they've actually hit the shell in several places inside the cage here, which is interesting. This is why you wanna wear glasses that literally just popped up and hit me in the lip. Um, but that's why I got glasses on. <laughs> so I would snip this as carefully as you can. Be careful not to actually ruin your terminal, of course. I don't care what happens to these motors because I am going to burn them out intentionally on the 3S LiPo. Since I've been told it can happen and I wanted to see how fast. I'm gonna tin my soldering iron off camera here. This tip is getting pretty old, so let's hope it doesn't hate me today. All right, so now I'm just going to put a little solder on here and hopefully If you haven't used one of these solder suckers before, they are pretty convenient uh, for this kind of stuff where you're going to need to clean up and Yeah, this tip is this tip is done. So all I'm doing is here is trying to heat up this crap and pull some of it off using suction here. And it may work more or less well depending on There is just so much gunk on here. There we go. Now I've actually I'm really not this bad at soldering. It is just hard to do this while keeping it in frame and not bending my head over it like I normally would. <laughs> I have done um, thousands of solder joints now between items for the shop and I had a whole batch of batteries where I ordered them and they um, didn't have the right connector, which I knew when I ordered them and I hand rewired um, hundreds of batteries and chargers. So I think I've done like 300 batteries and chargers. So I guess that's 600 <laughs> soldering joints just for those. Um, and practice makes perfect, seriously. Okay, so those are ready to go. Um, I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to push my, I just can't on, uh, over, I can literally push this on with one finger. I mean, they're easier to get on than any flywheel I've ever seen, and they're gonna walk right off. This is this is garbage. Uh, this is not gonna stand up to, to 3S, certainly, and I don't even know about 
abuse on 2S. I mean, it is a semi-auto blaster, so it doesn't... I mean, this just moves all over the place. And I... I'm kind of shocked. All right, so I've got a little test circuit here, and I'm just, all I'm doing is just connecting a single AA to see uh, the, oh, and I was afraid of that. A single AA is not, not enough current uh, or voltage to get this to actually spin, so I will quickly tap a 2S on here. Um, I would generally just recommend having, there's nothing worse than um, wiring something up and then realizing you've got it uh, wrong. <laughs> so I actually like to mark this. That is the positive. And I'll do the same. I'm gonna assume they're a mirror image, but you never know, because they could literally flip these either way. No, they're not, so. Woohoo! I'm just getting bad connections, bad connections on the solder here. Okay, so positive is the inside there. I'm sorry, this is not a Sharpie. Normally I would use a fine tip Sharpie. All right, so from there, we're just going to right off the bat get soldering here. And hopefully, And I did not pay attention to where the wires went, but I don't think it's going to be that crucial. Um, we'll find out here. Okay, lesson learned. I am now going to use a nice shiny new tip instead of this old uh, oxidized one. But I'm going to tin my connections. I always like to tin uh, connections like these before you attach because the fresh solder gives a very good conductive point for very easy um, soldering. And it will help you get a better better uh, joint as well. Boy, is there a lot of gunk on here. You can just see that crap boiling off there. I'm actually going to try push it away and try wipe that off on my sponge here. At least, as long as I've got one side completely open, that's as much as I'm worried about. I'm not going for perfection here because of but what Buff Daddy has already told us, that this is going to fail. I am just assuming that my next project is going to be to replace these. So we're just going to get these on. Let's get there. Come on. Now I'm holding this on here longer than normal because there is some serious gunk. Of course, now I'm wondering if I have run this not the way I want it. Yep, no, that's good. I, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, you guys aren't any help, are you? <laughs> so now my favorite way is to to never do those little Y connectors like I see people doing. There's no reason to do that. Um, I never break the circuit whenever I can help it, so I always tend to just split or mark and then uh, open. So this is our positive over, over, over here. Anytime I can give a physical connection like this where I've got an actual split on that, um, I will do it. And everybody's got their own way. There's no right or wrong way to do stuff as long as it you know works for you. So. If you prefer the little in and then a T connector, you go ahead and do that. Wow, and these, all that gunk in there is really not helping the solder flux here. But we will get there through patience and perseverance. <laughs> all right, that'll do. Now we'll get our negative going.
must be the battery done that time. I am working on the noise in my workshop, trying to get the audio even better because uh, I am a little picky when it comes to that. Let me just make sure this was, yeah, that's nicely tanned, okay. If you do not have helping hands yet, um, this is like the crappiest cheap version that's on uh, Amazon. If you don't have them yet, you definitely need to buy this like $6 pair. Uh, it's not very good. It, it kind of fell apart and I feel like it's poorly made, but um, it, it does the job as well as you as you need it to do. So there's our negative, and I will see our battery, our wire run goes something like that. So this is a little, getting a little wonky, but I don't think we are too concerned with uh, distance. So again, I'm going to sort of just mark that. I actually normally use a, uh, for black or for colored stuff, I mark it with a, uh, Silver Sharpie, which kind of write metallic, it writes on just about everything, but that'll work fine. I am opting here to just use whatever tools are in front of me rather than stopping recording, going and finding the tool and come back. So I actually usually use a little screwdriver if I want to just split these open. So don't get the wrong impression, I'm not cutting the wire here. I'm simply just creating a slot in it that I can put over this. Uh, because if it has a physical connection like this, it will be a stronger, uh, uh, stronger physical connection. So if it gets tugged or there's vibration, you'll have a little bit of extra, extra hold. And I figure why not? That and I've built about, I don't know, 80 hurricanes and <laughs> I've only had about one fail due, due to a soldering joint. And that customer is probably watching right now. And uh, I hope you got your hurricane back by now. <laughs> I always take care of my customers uh, no matter what. That's the core of, of doing this as a uh, sort of pseudo business right now or uh, part of my income is you got to take care of you guys. All right, so those are not the best soldering joints I've ever done, but um, you know it's it's going to get redone shortly. Okay, so I'm actually going to try jam these back into these little melted bits, and they've got wow, those are really that is such an interesting. I've never seen that in a Nerf blaster. I, mean, I you know I haven't been around that long in this stuff, so there might be other blasters where they've have done this and I just wasn't aware. But that looks uh, that looks like a, a flywheel cage finish. So hopefully you got a good picture of that there and you can see that's what it should look like. And um, just because I am always fearful that I've screwed something up, I like to quickly test. Let's not do 3S though, huh? Again, I would normally do this with a test battery. I just am a little lazy. Yeah, so don't do what I do, do what I say instead. That's something like that. <laughs> anyway, this is now ready to get put back in. And uh, we're going to kind of bring this front and center. Uh, I'm trying to do this without looking over. This is a really, Wow, so there was just tons of room there. None of those wires were any problem at all as far as fit. Um, and then we are just going to route this down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this cage, these cage screws back in. So both of these flywheel shafts, this is sort of interesting. As I've mentioned, they're way, way off um, <clears throat> as far as they are not as tight as they should be but they are both sitting about a millimeter deeper than they were when I bought them, which is... Okay, I need to get the right screwdriver. This is ridiculous. I cannot seem to tell what the right screwdriver is because half of these screws are stripped. Um, they must put them in with, I mean, they obviously don't care about getting them back out, so I'm sure they put them in with uh, a powered device. There would be no reason to do uh, this. So I'm still using a Phillips one, but I am gonna use the powered one. And right now, because these are the cage screws, I'm picking screws that I know have better heads. There's always little quirks like this. I mean, these blasters are not built to be taken apart. 
And so, you know, like the Nemesis, one of the biggest problems with that is it's got three solvent welded screws. And on that blaster, boy, is that frustrating when you're, you're dealing with that. Now I have to actually remember how to do this. Okay, that looks approximately right. Sometimes the worst part about modding is if you don't have a video to follow, uh, it's just figuring out where did I take that part out of? Well, that looks likely. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal this back up. A couple more nice strip screws. Oh, oh, and I bet someone, I bet someone caught this. <laughs> I almost didn't put the fifth cage screw back in. So, so the cage has five screws there, so do remember that. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, sorry guys, if you were following this and actually modding, you did not need to take that apart <laughs> because you could have done the whole thing separately. Oh, that's gonna be fun to get out later. Good thing about Nerf modding is you can always glue stuff. If you lose a screw, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. If anybody knows why, why these screws seem to be so stripped or why it's the wrong size, it, it wasn't a number one, zero, 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 or two. None of those worked well. And they're not, I don't think they're proprietary or anything weird like that, like a security screw. But anyway. Oh, hello. Oh, that was fun. Just stuff everywhere. Standard modding, you know. <laughs> okay. So as I mentioned, this is very much just a mod as I go talk off the top of my head. I really do generally prefer to seriously plan and execute rather than just kind of um, a hodgepodge. But uh, since this blaster is so new, I figured I would. Now, I left all these locks here. They're now no longer wired, but that's, that is acting as a spring for this, so you do want to leave that. Over here, we've got this piece. I am going to simply cut this off, and I hope I'm right. Wow, that went flying. Again, guys, wear safety glasses. Um, that like 15 feet over to my garage wall. So what I'm doing here is I basically removed the trigger safety. So I will now be able to pull the trigger whenever I feel like it because that's uh, one of the safeties that I want. Sorry, this was a little annoying. I might even, let's see, I'm gonna pre-compress a little bit so it sticks in a little better. take the trigger out, but that would be too much work. Okay, third time's the charge, charm here. I'm super excited by these blasters. It's nice seeing competition for, for Hasbro, and then obviously, I like Rival a lot. Okay, well that brings us over to the fit of everything else. So a couple things I've noticed here is I want to see how this interfaces with everything. So that was just to hold um, the switch prior. So that whole, when we're looking at this here, this whole terminal can go. And my plan actually has changed since I initially saw this. I am thinking, I'm gonna do a 15 amp switch. Uh, there's no reason to do 20 because there's no way these motors with the way they're rated actually need it. I mean, you could certainly do 20. It, it would probably be better overall. But I think I'm gonna try get this in is that going to be too tight? Let's just see what that would feel like. You know what, we're just gonna hack a little off. So for the sake of not having to get out the Dremel, I am going to just hack away with these. Now, uh, do be real careful when you're doing this kind of stuff because, sharp. Now I know what someone's gonna say, they're gonna ask me if I'm gonna do a switch plate for this. And if it turns out this blaster has a reason to, to keep existing after, after this is done, I certainly will do a switch plate because who wants to do all the filling and cutting? So that, that's the general idea. I'm gonna get it to there, but it's gotta be, I've got a little more to actually pull off of it. This is an actual flush cutters. I love these two because they can cut from the top down and honestly a lot of times I don't even drag out the Dremel if I can do this 
Okay, that's a lie. If I was in front of my bench, I would probably just use the Dremel, but uh, you do not have to have a Dremel for things like this. A lot of times you can do it with a couple hand tools, and, you know, why not? So let's just see if we've got room in there now. As far as space, there's just a lot of space in this blaster. Empty and room in the handle. Um, I could definitely see doing a full auto kit, and there's room for... Oh, I suppose you could put it there, sticking up in. That wouldn't be as elegant. I would probably... Hmm. Well, for sure a full auto kick switch could go there. Could use a smaller one, but I really do like the action on the bigger switches. Okay, so if we get this in here... Okay, now I'm going to cut a little bit of this guy too. I don't know how necessary this is going to be, but it's kind of in my way right now. And my purpose of this video was to see how fast could I actually do this. I don't have a ton of free time right now uh, due to another project that I've been alluding to, and I promise in, an, in a month or two I will tell everybody about, about it and uh, a little bit more. I just want to make sure there's enough room for wires, but it looks like that is pretty good just about there. And... And I'm going to make it so there's no slop on that. All right, so I've got that the way I want it. I'm going to throw on some rubber gloves. These are latex because I'm not allergic. But if you are, don't use latex. And it's a standard uh, EP200 epoxy putty. I do have this on my site, or you can pick it up all kinds of places. Hardware stores, Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's. Probably Walmart. I don't really go to Walmart very often until this blaster came out. Um, I'm actually going to need a fairly good chunk of this. I, I, if I keep modding this blaster, like, more than one, and keep going with it as a platform for anything else, I'm going to... I'll make a switch plate, because this one would be really easy, and you would just cut that thing down all the way. I'm going to seal that back up. So, I'm going to need this up real quick. I think I got enough. Did I get enough? All right, that's needed. We're going to just shove that in there. I know on this corner, I need to remember to make sure I leave enough room for the switch because it does have a bevel on that side. But I'm essentially just trying to make a nice flat, generally squarish, flat level surface there. And then where did my switch go? All right. So I'm actually going to have to kind of mound up a little bit in the center there to get... I could have used a tiny bit more to make this easier, but... The great stuff about this, or the great thing about that epoxy putty is generally, if you get this right, you actually don't have to um, use any glue. But I am going to end up using glue here too because I have definitely not... Uh, All right, I'm not in love with the trigger action on how that feels, but it's pretty good. It's no worse than the stock, anyway. Now even... Hmm. We could trim this down and actually move the switch down to give more room for wires, but I'll worry about that on a future mod. That feels pretty, pretty darn good to me. Good action. Yeah, so I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to... Just take the back end of this blade and kind of push up, push up some of this uh, epoxy putty to make sure that it is con making a firm contact on all sides of the switch. And I might drop a tiny bit of super glue or, so, or uh, some other glue in there. Uh, do be careful when you're using super glue with switches because the cyanacrylate glues uh, do have vapors which will screw up your switch if they get inside. So when you do it, you want to use like a super thick. Uh, glue 
and uh, put it all, you know, just carefully on the edges around, I like to do. Or, you know, hot glue is always great. So while we're waiting for that to go, I'm gonna keep going on where I want my wire path to be. Now, this is a bit weird because it's all this room for the battery terminal. I am wondering how hard is that to get through? Because basically there is room underneath here for wiring, uh, but it seems kind of annoying. Let's see if I can fish this through or not. We're gonna go, um, we're gonna switch the positive. Let me see if there's any chance of me getting this in here without, there is totally not. Okay, so for sake of simplicity, I'm going to cut. If you wanna take the extra time, you could lift this bezel up and out and take the switch off and probably get your wires run properly. There is definitely a path down there. How? Oh. I'm actually a little confused. Is it just these screws? Nope, don't care. Normally I would not use a flush cutters for this section. I would definitely take a drill or a Dremel and cut nice little holes, but we're just gonna do a quick and dirty this is how you mod this kind of video today. And I'm just gonna cut over here. I don't care about, there's a massive battery door. It's not like uh, a little hole down here is gonna make any sense. Now when I mod stuff for customers, I do not do this kind of work. I definitely clean things up considerably more. And I'm a little more picky because it's out there and it's representing me and I'm usually selling to people who don't wanna mod. So I don't wanna give them a fix or another problem. Um, so again, that's super sloppy, but will live. So that's going to go down through there and I will cut that. I'm actually going to make it go like just a little bit up. It's a tiny bit extra wire, but it'll be a little easier to solder. Now everybody has a different method here, but I actually prefer, if you're steady handed enough, I prefer to solder in place. And the reason I do that is because it, it holds whatever you're soldering for you. And like this one, for instance, has perfect solder tabs. So once that's locked into place with the glue, I can just shove this in there, blurp a little solder on there, and I'm good to go. Um, so from there, so in case anybody's not following right now, we've got positive going down through here. It's gonna go to the switch, and then it's gonna go right up to the positive battery. Negative will come through here and go straight to the battery, and that's our whole circuit. It's really, really quite simple. So I'm gonna cut this about here. I'll strip that and have that ready for our battery connection. And since that is for the battery, it gets a piece of heat shrink. We are going to put an XT60. Well, I'll just take a risk. I normally would wait until, I'd just go away for 15, 20 minutes to an hour to let that, um, to let this uh, epoxy putty harden but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and kind of play a little more risky. Wow, so I did a bad job sticking that in there. So it, when a uh, switch has a, a terminal like this, you can, you can of course just solder, you know, uh, you can put flux on both sides, uh, t uh, tin them both and then put it in, but I just like to shove these in like this, try to have it coming out the same direction guess I will use, sometimes you can do this without even having to use like a, set, a helping hands or anything, but um, this just can make it really easy. This can make it really easy to, to solder, uh, solder switches because the switch is nice and immobile from being glued in place, you know, in theory. And you know you've done it right when it comes out the other side and has fluxed through the wire like it just did there. I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but you do want to, of course, make sure the other side's not touching. Now, if I had been a little bit more boss, I would have put a piece of heat shrink on there. Generally, I when I'm doing a mod that I've done over and over, I put heat shrink on the wire and then slide that up through just to make it look a little more professional, a little more clean, and I don't know. I just generally try to do it when I can. So then we've got the other side, which is right here. Now, this one I wouldn't put a heat shrink on just because of the angle it's coming in. It's just not really... Super, fe super feasible to have, to have that. And before I put that wire back down, I will go ahead and solder that second one in place.
And you do want to be careful that you don't touch the edge of the blaster. I did actually touch that a little bit. All the more reason to make a switch plate and fix the location of this. All right, so that wire will become our battery lead. So positive in to the switch, through the switch, back out. And I'm kind of just trying to be gentle here because I know that switch is not in place. And I also do like to come back and check, hey, does my switch still work? Yeah, we're good. And now we have no safety. Uh, I did keep this white sliding thing because it adds a little additional pressure to the switch. It might not be necessary. You could probably lose it all together. It, it's kind of up to you. If you like a heavier trigger pull, that's giving you a little bit, depending on how much action you let, let, it let you, how much action you allowed for the switch to have. So that's essentially good. Um, I do need to, however, uh, I essentially need to kind of wait until this dries to finish up, but we'll go over here and I am going to do a couple different things here. Let's actually, since I don't even want to get up, I'm going to double up on this uh, heat shrink. So there's two small pieces for each individual one. And since I've had this really odd wire route, which is not one I would recommend, I... All right, and I'm back. So one of the problems with the way I'm filming with a 5D Mark IV Canon is that uh, 16 minutes is all I get for a 64 gigabyte card. And while I do have a couple 256 gig cards, I'm constantly fighting batteries, memory, and storage on my computer because a mod guide like this is probably gonna be a terabyte by the time I'm done, not to mention render files and everything else. Anyway, those are small technical problems that I am going to overcome this year and get a really slick setup. So what I've done here is I did just put a little strain relief so that it's not tugging on either of the wires separately. And I will probably shoot some hot glue in there just to keep the cords from going, the wires from going around. Now generally, like I said, I think in the future, my next one of these, I will probably go route those wires properly underneath, but to just show the basic mod, I figure this is good enough for now. And I may still, if this becomes a blaster that people want to mod and want, and there's a purpose, if these wheels hold up, like I'm concerned about, uh, and we want to do things with this, this blaster, then I will make switch plate, I will do a full legitimate mod that's a little more uh, useful. And so my uh, helping hands, because they are a cheap, cheap one, are um, qu quite in need of replacing. I ought, really ought to buy myself a second one. Quick little tip here, I like to use a second old connector to help keep this in shape, uh, keep you, give you some extra tolerance for overheating, and um, also just as a good mounting point because you can have the other one permanently mounted in a vise or in a clamp. So we're going to uh, heat shrink as I lose my heat shrink here. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Negative is always the curved hexagonal side and and uh, the other side is always positive. Flat side is always positive. Do not mix that up. Checking my microphone, I apologize. All right, I'm just gonna tin my iron here a little bit. Now I only, I do this a little different than some people do. I actually prefer to just lightly tin the two ends. Um, I do not do the fill the cup method uh, from this end. And everybody has a different way of doing this, but I did not make this uh, cut long enough. Oh, actually it's okay. I might melt a little rubber. So I like to just do this um, because this is less contact, less heat contact on the actual soldering uh, solder cup there. If you fill the whole solder cup, um, I find you end up having to heat it longer. And I, like I mentioned, have done hundreds of XT60 connectors. So I just like to hold, hold this in here until it boils. You will feel it suck inside, especially if it helps if you hold this downhill. I'll do a video on this, explaining this up in a close up, because I know on here, you really can't tell what the heck I'm doing. But rather than fill the cup, then have to reheat the cup, I do this all in one go, and I have not had any problems with with them, uh, and that's including, you can see that has sucked everything in, so I'm gonna give it just a little bit more, and then we're good there. You do need to, however, fill the whole cup with solder, so I wanna be clear about that. It's not about not filling the cup, it's just about the order of operations there. 
Oh, and of course, if you leave your heat shrink up towards the, uh, the part, you are going to melt it. So I will try to pull that back. Oh, good helping hands. Just uh, com comes right off there. I should have got myself any one of those for Christmas. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really stingy on the stupidest things. Like, <laughs> I probably would make really good use of another $6 set of helping hands, but uh, instead I'm like, no, I can, just, yeah, I can just make this one work for forever. It's good. Oh, and I'm sorry, this iron is just killing me. You can see how black and oxidized it is. I probably, uh, you know, soldering iron is on and I walk away. If you get that reference, put it in the comments. I'd be curious if anybody knows. <laughs> All right, so there's our soldering cup or our XT60 and cups filled, ready to go. And we're going to just slide our Go ahead and slide our pieces up. I am going to need to hopefully gently coax this one back into place so I can just to give it enough. Uh, again, I'm not trying to cut this, I'm just trying to open it so I can slide it all the way there. I do generally find that these are, it's as important to have this piece of heat shrink here because it's so easy to have one little stray piece of hobby wire, one strand, and uh, that is not a perfect solder joint. I will do a video just on this with a fresh iron so I can actually show. So next I would heat shrink that, but I, uh, uh, I'm gonna heat shrink the actual connector. This is not a requirement and it's maybe a little overboard, but I just like, I give this a little stretch. I'll also do this in that video. And I put this on here and then we'll, we'll heat gun the whole thing. So at that point, we are ready to close up the blaster. I like to glance around my workspace. What parts have I forgot? And there's actually just this, um, just the uh, uh, muzzle here, which has the little hop up inside. And we will give this a quick Oh, that just sounds horrible, you guys. So I'm almost sure what's happening is that the flywheels have been pushed a little low um, because I just, you know, pushed them on finger tight. Oh, and they just, like, that one moves so easily. Oh, I, yeah, I'm... Well, I would say that's definitely, so that's just, a, um, oh, that's a 3S. <laughs> I thought I grabbed a 2S, so obviously a, a 3S is going quite hot. Uh, I am going to grab heat shrink, heat gun. All right, so I've got my heat gun. I'm just going to hit these joints really quickly to, to finish them up. And I like doing my connectors like this because I feel like it gives a nice professional connector, really looking, good looking job. And now we are truly ready to close up the blaster. We've tested it already on 3S. We know it fires. Rather, we don't know it fires, but it's definitely going in the right direction. I'm going to make sure that this works. Yep, and I can fire at any time now. I like that. And I'll close it up, and then we are done with this. And then we'll go to the chronograph, see what 2S and 3S look like. Oh, this is my 2S. <laughs> Here's the 2S. All right, so I'm going to get all these screws put back in here, hopefully all of which I left in place. All right, so we are closed up. I am going to first toss, this is a fully charged 2S 65C 1 amp hour graphene. It's as beefy of a 2S pack as you can pretty much get, other than the fact that it could be much, much larger. Uh, but 65 amps is way more than this is going to need, so that's a good test. Look how much space is in there. I love 
rival blasters for that. It just makes batteries so easy. So I'm gonna quickly close this up and we are ready to go to the chronograph and I'll give you some final thoughts. All right, so first we've got 2S. This is using the ammo that came with the blaster. So we're getting uh, maybe a five to seven FPS average increase. Not really that high, but that is only 2S. Now I'm gonna use some genuine Hasbro ammo. So we're still right around uh, 100 FPS. Really not all that great. So next I'm gonna set up and we'll do 3S. All right, so now this is on uh, 3S. I am noticing the wheels walk themselves off the flywheels already because I can hear more rubbing. 112. 103. 112. 108. 116. 114. 113. All right, so I have, I have already burnt out a motor. So long story short, um, without setting up another thing for me to do all of this, uh, this, is an, this is a not 3S blaster. I'm not even sure about 2S. I think it's okay on 2S. Uh, the motors are fine, but the flywheels are walking themselves right off and they'll jam up completely until they stall and then you will ruin the motors. So thanks for watching. I really hope this helped. I know this is not a very succinct mod guide. I really do want to focus on well-produced, well thought out, um, pre-planned and all the tools ready and everything. I've got a few little problems here. This is not actually my work surface. So all of my tools are about 15 feet that way. So I have to keep going back and finding the things I'm forgetting that I need. There's no way to properly light my surface. If you like how this looks, the reason this looks good is because there's a $5,000 light. If you like how this looks, the reason it looks good is because there's a very expensive piece of lighting equipment in front of me here uh, called a Chimera Octobank with a uh, Joker 800 HMI. And it is a beautiful light. It's what makes my videos look so good, one of the reasons anyway. And, uh, but there's no way to put that in my workspace. So I'm working on figuring out a better way to do this so I can do more mod guides in the future. Let me know what you think of this longer format. Uh, it's kind of against my nature as far as the way I want to produce videos, but I hope it was somewhat helpful to anybody that wants to step in and jump in on this mod. Uh, it is definitely not the ultimate way to do it, as, as I said, there are a few things I would change inside as far as you could run the wires better, you could do less cutting and make it look a lot cleaner. But in the end, it's modded and other than our flywheel issue and the motors, we're, we're you know, good to go. So stick with 2S on this. I highly do not recommend using 3S. And until next time, have fun modding guys and girls. I'm out of darts.